wise man once said, why should we not all live in peace and harmony? We look up at the same stars, we are fellow passengers in the same planet, and we dwell beneath the same sky. What matters it along which road each individual endeavors to find the ultimate truth? Here is a young man. He looks out upon the same stars, the same sky as you and I, yours, mine, and his. But who is this young man? Just who is he and why is he here today? Well, I think he can tell you much better than I can. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Singer, and I thank you very much for letting me come to your home through the magic of television. Because I do believe whenever I or one of my European countrymen has a chance and an opportunity to speak to you, it will help to overcome and to strengthen the common bond and to get us to a goal which is our common goal, which Benjamin Franklin described so beautifully as the pursuit of happiness. I'm an Austrian, and I'm coming from an average Austrian family, that means my father he designs electric railroad locomotives. My mother, she's the head of a household, although she doesn't want to admit it. But uh, she has the same duties and the same chores uh, all of you housewives have. It means she has to try to make ends meet. And my sister, she's a chemist, and so is her husband. And she has a darling little boy who is just uh, as nice and just as much of a nuisance as small children are. I went through the same educational process most of the children go through at home. That means I started to go to grade school when I was about six years old and attended grade school for four years. And afterwards, I went to high school, which we call a gymnasium or real gymnasium, which is a modernistic type of it. I graduated after eight years, and then I enrolled at the University of Vienna as a journalism major. Well. I was just about in the second semester when I found in my mail one of those famous or infamous letters which started out with greetings and told me that I was eligible for service in the German army since Hitler had moved into Austria in 1938. Well, I joined the Air Force and had to quit my studies at a time and went through all different pleasant and unpleasant experiences through the war, mostly unpleasant ones, which uh, brought brought me to various European countries and also to Russia, where I finally was wounded and lost a leg. After the war, I had one of my greatest thrills and one of my finest experiences when I met an American doctor, Dr. Walter E. Heinlein, who is surgeon and professor of surgery at Bill College. He's an osteopath, and he took some work over in Europe, and you know our medical school in Vienna is still quite famous and has a good reputation all over the world. I may mention a few things about this point which surprised me when I came here, because I was surprised to find out that osteopaths are s having a hard time over here. That means they have to fight for their reputation, they have to fight against prejudice. It amazed me because osteopaths are fully recognized in Europe and all the people I had a chance to meet over there of this profession uh, had a very good standing and the treatment I experienced here in Steel Hospital was a wonderful one. So I think a country should be happy to have two groups, highly successful groups, the MDs and the ODs, that means the osteopaths. Dr. Heinlein brought me to the United States and he brought me to Drake University where I enrolled in journalism again to finish my college education. When I came to the United States, I had a good background on life in America because in Europe you hear quite a, f a bit about it. You form your opinion in a preschool age already and I myself was an ardent player of cowboy and Indian games and of course I wanted to be an Indian myself all the time and run around with feathers in my hair and uh, throwing knives and tomahawks and so I was quite prepared for my trip to the United States but seriously we also learned quite a bit about America in school and also after school by 
uh, watching different newsreels and movies, which I might say don't always convey the right impression, because America certainly doesn't look like as Hollywood depicts it sometime. Also, the American Army and here the Information Service Branch helps very much to strengthen the common bond between Europe and the United States today. And also the American Army helps to show Europeans that Americans are not millionaires only, but are common people interested in the same fun and in the same kind of life as most of the European people are. Well, Austria, to tell you a little bit about it, is just about the same size as Iowa. It sounds surprising because Austria has a great history, also uh, its future is rather small. It has been cut down to its present size after the First World War, when we lost all our former parts of the uh, Austrian-Hungarian Empire and were left with the present-day country. Our population is about seven and a half million people, and it also indicates the major trouble we have right now. Our country is simply overcrowded. It reflects in all different fields of uh, daily life, of course. Housing is the problem. Our capital, Vienna, for instance, covers just about the same area as Des Moines does. Nevertheless, it has a population of not quite two million people, so you can see that it is impossible to build nice cottage homes as you find them over here, but we have to live in apartment houses, overcrowded and not always quite pleasant. So we are in a rather crowded situation, nevertheless the people are happy and are carrying on rather efficiently in spite of all different handicaps which have been brought about by the end of the Second World War, when the country was partly occupied by the Russian forces, which resulted in a kind of unpleasant situation. I might say that we are more fortunate than the Germans are out in the uh, West. Germany, as you know, has been divided uh, completely, separated into an eastern part and a western part, which is divided by an airtight iron curtain. At home, the situation is different. We have a curtain, but I would call it, if Mr. Churchill will pardon my saying so, a wooden curtain and not an iron curtain. It means you can travel back and forth and the restrictions and difficulties are smaller ones than they are in other Russian occupied countries. We are in a, an extremely or extraordinary spot in as far as Austria is just about the only place in the world where the two powers, that means Western and Eastern powers, are still getting along. And I think it is mainly on account of the fact that we ha were very happy to have General Mark Clark, who is at present High Commander in the Far East in Japan, as our first High Commissioner. And General Mark Clark had a very firm and so sound attitude towards uh, Russian forces, which resulted in a better cooperation of those two powers at present. But I'm not going to talk about politics only. I might mention a few more things. All of you have heard about the Blue Danube. Well, and I'm afraid I have to disappoint you rather badly because the Danube, and I've seen it quite, quite often, has never been blue. But uh, we say that people, or people say that blue, in German at least, it means that somebody is slightly tipsy. So they say even Johann Strauss composed the Danube, he must have been blue or tipsy because it is green or gray. Another thing which uh, surprised me when I came here is the fact that people refer to uh, those hot dogs as weenies. Well, that's exactly the way we, we refer to our citizens of Vienna. So I'm still a little embarrassed when I hear, hear somebody ordering weenies, and I still prefer to call them hot dogs myself. Another thing which I find in stores over here and which is slightly surprising is a Viennese bread. I plan on buying such a loaf and to take it home because I never saw such Viennese bread in Vienna myself. <laughs> Otherwise, I find America a wonderful country and especially American hospitality is still bewil bewildering to me. At home it is different. People are, and I hope my own countrymen will pardon me for saying so, are slightly hypocritical. If they invite you for dinner, it doesn't mean that you are supposed to show up. And so I took the same attitude when I came here and I was amazed to find that people were slightly offended when I didn't show up because they meant it. So I can say that American hospitality is just wonderful and so is American culture. 
I had a chance to attend an AIDA performance recently and uh, the turnout was just as great as in a town which is famous for its music, uh, Vienna, and performance was just as excellent as you could find it any place else. To speak about America's role in Europe in the future, I cannot tell you too much since I'm no fortune teller, of course, but I can say that much that America is entitled on account of its position and on account of its power to a leading role in the world. And although the nation itself hasn't made the adjustment completely, yet I'm sure it shouldn't take him too long, it shouldn't take you too long to overcome some prejudice which is still in existence today and to assume the full responsibility which uh, the United States deserve. To speak a little bit about American educational system, I think it is a very fine thing to see all this progressive education over here, although there might be some points as a uh, relationship between teacher and student is concerned, which might be slightly better in Europe. Although I think a combination of both systems might be the perfect solution, and maybe we can work it out to come to a point where we could combine both of them to get the result which all of us want, to get an almost perfect education. As far as my own home country is concerned, we had about 250 uh, sessions concerning the Austin Peace Treaty, which is not only a record, but also a waste of time. And we do hope that a new Russian policy will result in a better cooperation and will bring us the treaty and the final peace we deserve and will give us uh, possession of our natural resources and will give us a complete freedom. But I also can assure you that many thousand American tourists have enjoyed Austrian hospitality and Austrian, the beauty of Austrian country so far and I also can assure you that they didn't find the slightest danger over there. So if you have a chance, come over and enjoy the Salzburg festivals, which take place in August every year, and bring your finest orchestras, directors, and opera singers to this town, which happens to be Mozart's birthplace, as you know. And you also will have a chance to visit more of a country, and you'll find it in completely and thoroughly enjoyable. With uh, this wish to see all of you, or many of you, over there sometime, I may say goodbye for you, and may thank all of you for your kindness, and all you my friends, and I hope I may call all of you my friends whether I've met you in person or not. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Well, now you know who this young man is, Paul Singer from Austria, a country once very far from our own United States, now but a few hours from our shores by air travel. In this shrinking world, we have our differences. We must learn to live with them. He with ours and we with his. For our differences are really superficial. Beneath them all lie all the things in which we are alike, our needs, our wants, and our common humanity. And so we ask you to remember well this young man from Austria, a fellow man who was a fellow traveler on the same planet, who lives under the same sky and looks up at the same stars as you and I.